So dear students, National Issues 2020-2021, we can discuss topics one by one. Now, today in our discussion, we are going to have a look over 10 topics. The first one is BrahMos with extended range. Second one is ICGS, Kanaglada Barawa joins uh, Kakinada fleet. Third one is supersonic missile assisted release of uh, torpedo that is smart. Fourth one is IMD launches impact based cyclone warning system. Fifth one is NHRC advisory on women's flight. Sixth one is anti radiation missile that is Rudram. Seventh one is women's right to residence in shared household, the Supreme Court verdict. Next one is India's trans fat free by 2022. Then Kala Sanskriti Vikas Yojana that is KSVY. Then flash flood guidance service for South Asian countries. So on these topics, we should have a discussion. And as like I mentioned, we'll be going one by one in the first series that is the first 10 topics we'll have a discussion now when it comes to the first topic that is brahmos with extended range so right from the slide is very clear india successfully test fired the surface to surface supersonic cruise missile brahmos with indigenous components for an extended range from a land based platform of the odisha coast so brahmos as it is into discussion so all the missiles you should have clarity UPSC can frame question from BrahMos at the same time they can move to other missiles related to DRDO. Now here it was India successfully test fired the surface to surface supersonic cruise missile that's the discussion. BrahMos with indigenous components for an extended range from a land based platform of the Odisha cost and it was put to trial with indigenous booster, airframe section, propulsion system, power supply and many other major components. If you look into last year's question paper of 2020, UPSC asked a question right from solar water pumps. And in that there were two statements and that two statements were wrong. It is neither one nor two. And they asked technical details of solar water pumps. So in that manner, when you think UPSC can ask questions related to BrahMos in the same manner regarding their booster regarding their propulsion system regarding the airframe section regarding the power supplies and all and brahmos we all know is tested jointly con conducted by drdo and brahmos aerospace for an extended range of 450 km has paved the way for serial production of the indigenous booster and other indigenous comments of the powerful weapon system realizing the atmanirbhar bharat pledge now back to the discussion when a question comes, you should have one thing in your mind. What is the possibility of a question? Or when we discuss a topic, you should think, what is the possibility of getting a question? There are three possibilities. One is a direct question from that particular current affair. Who developed BrahMos, for example. Or UPSC can frame a related question. Right from BrahMos, they are not asking about BrahMos. They are asking a question related to other missiles developed by a DRDO. Or they can ask a fundamental questions related to that particular topic. That means in a GK manner, they are asking about the history. So when you listen to BrahMos, you should think, okay, I should understand the history behind when they started developing this one. What is the history behind developing this one? So the fundamentals should be clear. The current of that particular topic should be very clear. At the same time, the third one, what is the possibility of a related question also you should think. Now, when it comes to the newspaper, this was the news. India successfully test fires naval version of BrahMos missile. Hindu in October 2020, there was a clear photo. INS Chenna is one of the largest destroyer in the Indian Navy's fleet with an overall length of 164 meters and displacement of over 7,500 tons. The ship is armed with supersonic surface-to-surface -surface BrahMos missile and barrack eight long-range surface-to-air missiles. There was a beautiful figure in the newspaper. And India success, successfully test fires naval version of BrahMos missile. That was the news on that particular time. And try to have more detail and try to read 
from the material which is going to be provided by learning videos. Next is ICGS Kanagalada Barwa joins Kakinada fleet. It's a clear current affairs, nothing much to explain. But we should have more clarity regarding the Kakinada fleet at the same time, ICGS Kanagalada Barwa. So the news was it joined Kakinada Coast Guard fleet for permanent basing for patrolling the Andhra Coast. The Indian Coast Guard fast patrol vessel ICGS Kanagalada Barwa was commissioned at Kolkata. Built with indigenous technology, it is equipped with navigation and communication system. So here, what is ICGS Kanagalada Barwa and what is the discussion about Kakinada should be clear. The same discussion, whether in the newspaper, the Hindu newspaper, it was the same. ICGS Kanagalada Barwa joins Kakinada fleet. And this was the news, the same newspaper if I am reading. The 51 meter long FPV can sustain a speed of up to 35 nautical miles per hour and all the technicalities and the technical side of the uh, ICGS as it is given. The Indian Coast Guard fast patrol vessel ICGS Kanagalada Barwa which was commissioned at Calcutta on September 30 joined the Kakinada Coast Guard fleet on Sunday for permanent basing for patrolling the Andhra Pradesh coast. And ICGS Kanagalada Barwa is the fourth patrolling vessel on the Kakinada coast. And all the discussions related to the specific dis discussion related to what is this Kanagalada Barwa at the same time, what is the relevance of that particular uh, ICGS asset? It has to be understood by reading the content as. Now, the third topic is about supersonic missile assisted release of torpedo. Smart. So, we all know what is smart. So that is supersonic missile assisted release of top, torpedo. Now that SMART has been successfully flight tested from Wheeler Island off the coast of Odisha. That was the news. So it is a direct current affair and there should be clarity regarding SMART. So what is SMART? SMART is a missile assisted release of lightweight anti-submarine torpedo system for anti-submarine warfare. Operation far beyond top, torpedo range. This launch and Demonstration is significant in establishing anti-submarine warfare capabilities. So, what is SMART? I told the full form is uh, supersonic missile assisted release of torpedo. And that has been successfully flight tested from the Wheeler Island of the coast of Odisha. At the same time, SMART is a missile assisted release of lightweight anti-submarine torpedo system for anti-submarine warfare operations far beyond torpedo range. So that is the discussion of SMART and what is its capacity, what is its uh, technical side, there should be clarity. The uh, tracking stations along the coast and the telemetry station including downrange ships mention all events you can see in the discussion related to SMART. And this was a news which came in the newspaper, DRDO successfully tests anti-submarine warfare missile system. It says all the mission objectives including missile flight up to the range and altitude have been met perfectly. That was the news and the major heading. So the same discussion, the Defense Research and Development Organization on Monday successfully test fired a missile assisted release of lightweight anti-submarine torpedo system for anti-submarine warfare, a missile assisted release of torpedo. That is SMART. So what is SMART and what is this? technical side explained and there should be pinpoint clarity regarding SMART and the related technical side of SMART. Let's come to IMD launches impact based cyclone warning system. Indian Meteorological Department has launched a dynamic impact based cyclonic warning system aimed at minimizing economic losses and damage to property from cyclone that hits the country's cost every year. So there's a possibility of getting a clear conventional question from cyclone about UPSC asked last year also about cyclone. What is the cyclone is about? They asked a question related to the IEFA cyclone statement related question related to cyclone. There was a question in 2020. So in that manner, you can expect a question in mains exam two related to cyclone because IMD launches impact based cyclone warning system. So the Indian Meteorological Department has launched a dynamic impact based cyclone warning system 
So obviously, what is the dynamism should be there in our mind? What is the capacity of that particular finding right from IMD? So Indian Meteorological Department has launched a dynamic impact based cyclone warning system aimed at uh, minimizing economic losses and damage to property from cyclone that hit the country's cost every year. Specific warning will be issued to help prevent economic loss or damage to infrastructure. So that is a discussion of IMD's new finding. Now, in newspaper, this was the figure at the same time, this was the heading. You can see IMD reviews preparedness says so will release impact-based cyclone warning this season. The National Disaster Management Authority is executing the project and developing a web-based dynamic composite risk atlas in collaboration with IMD and coastal states. The pre- and post-monsoon months form the cyclone seasons. Storms during October to December, especially in the Bay of Bengal, ravage the eastern coast and damage property. So when it came in the newspaper, the newspaper is more into what is a cyclone, what is the crisis of a cyclone and how that is creating havoc over the coastal regions of India, that was the discussion. So the Indian Meteorological Department will release dynamic and impacts-based cyclone warning for districts this season to minimize economic losses and damage to property due to the Indian's weather system. Director General Murutunjai Mahapatra has said that was a discussion from the newspaper. So when it comes to this particular development from the side of the IMD, you should have clarity regarding cyclone as a conventional topic. At the same time, you should have an idea of what is developed and UPSC can relate this particular IMD's development and ask another question. This question is related to NHRC advisory on women's flight or sorry, women's right. So domestic violence is in discussion. There is two possibility you can get a question from Maine's perspective. There is high possibility of getting a question from Maine's, getting a question in Maine's right from uh, domestic violence. At the same time, UPSC can frame statement related questions from domestic violence. So domestic violence, there should be clarity. Now, NHRC advisory on women's right, the domestic violence has increased two and a half times during lockdown period. So in India, domestic violence as it is in discussion, so as an aspirant, you should have an idea what all are the different areas related to the act domestic violence. So the major advisory is setting up a task force on gender-based violence, violence prevention to be categorized as essential service, make provision for free contraceptives and other materials, moratorium for all loans taken by women workers, sex workers to be categorized as informal workers, ASHA workers to be paid as per minimum wages standard, napkins and iron folic acid tablets to be made essential items. So here the NHRC as such is giving significant advisories as such and UPSC can go in that level too. Out of this statement which all as such is the advisories or advices right from the side of NHRC or they can go to domestic violence discussions related to the act they can ask. Now, this was the news. NHRC issues advisory to government on women's rights during pandemic, the Hindu. Recommendation includes setting up task force on gender-based violence, free contraception, moratorium on loans taken by women workers. Setting up a task force on gender-based violence to coordinate and monitor support and prevention services, providing free contraception and giving moratorium for all loans taken by women workers was some of the recommendations of the National Human Rights Commission in its advisory to the government on Wednesday on protecting women's rights during the COVID-19 pandemic. So obviously NHRC has to be studied, Domestic Violence Act that has to be clar that you should have clarity. At the same time, the recent discussions related to the same, that is the recommendation of the NHRC in connection with the women's issues during the pandemic. Next is the term Rudram, R-U-D-R-A-M, that is anti-radiation missile. 
So the Rudram is first indigenous anti-radiation missile of the country for Indian Air Force being developed by Defense Research Development Organization. So it's a new generation anti-radiation missile that is Rudram was successfully flight tested that was uh, over the Wheeler Island of the coast of Odisha. So here anti-radiation missile Rudram, RUDRAM that should be clear. And Rudram is first in indigenous anti-radiation missile of the country for Indian Air Force being developed by DRDO. It's a new generation anti-radiation missile which was successfully flight tested on Wheeler Island of the coast of Odisha. That was the discussion. And the missile was launched from Su-30 MKI fighter aircraft. The missile is integrated on Su-30 MKI fighter aircraft as the launch platform, having capability of varying ranges based on launch condition. It has INS GPS navigation with the passive homing head of for the final attack. So the various advantages of this particular anti-radiation missile, it should have you should have clarity regarding the same. And the Rudram, the speciality of Rudram in newspaper, it speaks much about its pinpoint accuracy. So Rudram hit the radiation target with pinpoint accuracy. You can see that in newspaper. And in newspaper, this was the new scheme that is country's first indigenous anti-radiation missile successfully tested. The Hindu, India's first indigenous new generation anti-radiation missile is tested off Odisha on October 9, 2020. That was a discussion. Next topic is women's right to residence in shared household. Supreme Court has clarified the legal position on shared household under the Domestic Violence Act 2005. So this year there is high possibility of getting a question right from a Domestic Violence Act 2005 in prelims and main examination because Domestic Violence Act as it is in discussion I mentioned in the previous topic also. So here the Supreme Court has clarified the legal position on shared household under the Domestic Violence Act and that has often been a matter of dispute between women victims of and their in-laws families. Interpretation to shared household by the Supreme Court of India is like this. A woman was entitled to claim right to residence in shared household where she had been living with her husband even if the set house belongs to his relative. So that is a clarity what Supreme Court of India is telling about women's right to residence in shared household. A woman was entitled to claim right to residence in a shared household where she had been living with her husband even if the set house belongs to his relatives. Now this was the news from the Indian Express Supreme Court. Women has right of residence in a shared household of in-laws. The ruling came on a plea by a Delhi resident against an order of the Delhi High Court, setting aside a trial court decision allowing his plea to evict, this, evict his daughter-in-laws from the first floor of his property in New Friends Colony. So Indian Express conveyed all the background behind UPSC as it is not into personal question most of the time. So you should have an idea of what is Supreme Court verdict in connection with shared household. So I told the interpretation to sharehold a woman was entitled to claim right to residence in a shared household where she had been living with her husband even if the said house belongs to his relative. That was a discussion right from the side of the Supreme Court of India. Next is India trans fat free by 2022. Government effort to make India trans fat free by 2022. Trans fat right from 2011 you can see UPSC asked good number of questions related to trans fat. So government's effort to make India trans fat free by 2022 a year ahead of WHO's target in synergy with the Prime Minister vision of a new India on 75 years of the country's independence. FSSAI's Eat Right India movement target to promote safe and healthy food for everyone in an environmentally sustainable way. That's the discussion. A key focus of FSSAI this year is elimination of trans fat from the food supply chain. So what is trans fat? What is the basics behind FSSAI? And at the same time, what is the discussion of India trans fat free by 2022? And the technicalities of trans fat has to be understood. Now, 
Trans fat is a major contributor to rise in non-communicable disease in India. We know trans fat is a modifiable risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Eliminating uh, cardiovascular disc risk factor is especially relevant during COVID-19. So obviously, this trans fat as such is as such should have you have sorry trans fat you should have clarity. Now, right from the side of uh, FSSAI, there was a press release, and the press release is in this manner. Another step towards India at 75. Another step towards India at 75, freedom from trans fat by 2022. This was the discussion. FSSAI press release. New Delhi, February 8, 2021, with Gazette of Recent Regulation to Limit the Content of Trans Fat in All Food Items, the Food Safety and Standard Authority of India joins the League of Several Other Nations Globally, having best practices, oh, sorry, having best practice policies for trans fat elimination. With enactment of recent regulation on trans fat, India joins the club of around 40 countries globally that have already enacted the best practice policies to eliminate trans fats and would be among the first countries in Asia after Thailand in achieving the best practice policies in trans fat elimination. So now we are having an international accord in connection with this trans fat by 2022 or freedom from trans fat by 2022 and um, the FSSAI as it is very clear about the program. So with the enactment of a recent regulation on trans fat, India joins the club of around 40 countries globally that have already enacted the best practices or best practice policies to eliminate trans fat. And this is the first country in Asia after Thailand or India is the first country in Asia after Thailand in achieving the best practice policies in trans fat elimination. That was the news. And the next topic is on uh, Kala Sanskriti Vikas Yojana, KSVY. KSVY is in discussion. Recently, Ministry of Culture has formulated and devised guidelines to help artists, organizations who have already been sanctioned grant under the various schemes, components of Kala Sanskriti Vikas Yojana to conduct even on virtual mode. So, what is Kala Sanskriti Vikas Yojana? Kala Sanskriti Vikas Yojana is an umbrella under, sorry, umbrella scheme under the Ministry of Culture for promotion of art and culture in the country. And Ministry of Culture has formulated and devised guidelines to help artists, organizations who have already been sanctioned grant under various schemes, components of Kala Sanskriti Vikas Yojana. They can conduct events on virtual mode. So due to that, Kala Sanskriti Vigas Yojana is in discussion and uh, right from the PIB last year, October, there was a notification or a press release from PIB and it is Ministry of Culture. Culture Ministry issues guidelines for holding cultural events, activities in virtual, online mode under various scheme components of Central Sector Scheme, Kala Sanskriti Vigas Yojana. This was a major heading. Culture Ministry issues guidelines for holding cultural events, activities in virtual, online mode under various scheme components of Central Sector Scheme, Kala Sanskriti Vikas Yojana. The guidelines will enable artists to avail benefit under these schemes in virtual mode also and will ensure continued financial assistance to tide over the present crisis. Present crisis means COVID-19. So that was a press release from PIB on 16th October 2020 at 11.25 a.m related to Kala Sanskriti Vikas Yojana and that press release was from Ministry of Culture. So what is the press release is about? What is the new change in Kala Sanskriti Vikas Yojana in light of this pandemic scenario or in connection with the pandemic scenario and fundamental clarity regarding Kala Sanskriti Vikas Yojana. And in connection with Kala Sanskriti Vikas Yojana in the press release, there is more detail and as an aspirant, you should have a clarity what is basically repository grant that is under repository grant training of artists by their respective gurus and performance of cultural activities may be conducted online that is repository grant is about that is training of artists by their respective gurus and performance of cultural activities by the by online mode that is what called repository grant is about then next one is the national presence under national presence, cultural programs, festivals, seminar, etc. at national level for promotion of arts, culture may be conducted online. That is another one the national presence is about. So UPSC can ask, related to Kala Sanskriti Vigas Yojana, a term national presence is in use. What is it about? A, B, C, D. 
or related to national presence kala sanskriti vikas yojana consider the following statement like that or related to repository grant what which all other statement are right like that they can ask next is a uh, cfpgs under cultural function and protection grant seminars conference research workshops festival exhibition symposia production of dance drama theater music etc and so and small research project on different aspect of indian culture may be conducted online so what is cfpg cultural function and production grant we can conduct all this we can conduct uh, seminars conferences research workshops festival exhibition symposia production of dance drama theater music etc and small research project on different aspects of indian culture can be conducted online that is what called cultural function and production grant that is cfpg next is himalayan heritage under humanitarian heritage under financial assistance for the preservation and development of cultural heritage of the himalaya study and research preservation and documentation dissemination through audio visual program training in traditional and, and folk art may be conducted online so that is related to himalayan heritage next is regarding the buddhist or tibetan under financial assistance for development of buddhist tibetan art research project purchase of books documentation cataloging award of scholarship to monks holding of special courses and culture audio visual recording documentation it upgradation training aids for monastic salary to teachers may be performed online so that is about the fifth one and sixth one the scholarship and fellowship under scheme of scholarship and fellowship for promotion of art and culture advanced training with india in the field of indian classical music indian classical dance theater mime visual art folk traditional and indigenous art and light classical music and research may be performed online so here related to kala sanskriti vikas yojana there are discussions called scholarship fellowship buddhist and tibetan himalayan heritage cfpgs national presence and repository grant now the last topic of this discussion or this video is flash flood guidance service for south asian countries so the beneficiaries were or are india bangladesh bhutan nepal and sri lanka now what is flash flood guidance service for south asian countries the flash flood guidance is a robust system designed by the indian meteorological department to provide the necessary protect in real time to support the development of warning for flash flood about 6 to 12 hours in advance at the watershed level with resolution of 4 km to 4 km for the flash flood prone south asian countries so it is really an advantage because we'll get advance news related to flash flood so we can't call now it's flash flood because we are getting a clarity now flood is going to happen because of this particular reason in this particular nature so flash flood guidance is a robust system designed by the indian meteorological department to provide the necessary predicts in real time to support the development of warning of four flash floods about 6 to 12 hours in advance at the water shed level with a resolution of 4 km to 4 km for the flash flood prone south asian countries now in indian express this was the news imd launches flash flood guidance service for country south asian neighbors comma south asian neighbors so this was the news india has launched first of its kind flash flood guidance service for south asian countries india bangladesh bhutan nepal and sri lanka to issue impact forecasting of floods and the news as such new delhi india has launched first of its kind flash flood guidance service for south asian countries india bangladesh bhutan nepal and sri lanka to issue impact based forecasting of floods which are very sudden and of short duration at the watershed and also city level so it is developed by imd and that is to provide necessary warning in connection with flash flood to countries that is india bangladesh bhutan nepal and sri lanka so in our total discussion of today we discussed uh, 10 topics in the next video we'll be covering the next 10 topics and national issues as i mentioned you should have pinpoint clarity you have to approach each and every topic in three different manner that is why every topic i related with the newspaper so you have to look into the conventional static area of every topic at the same time you should have complete idea about the current affair of that particular topic and the possibility of getting a related question also now the trend is upsc is asking 
either conventional static area of a current affair topic or a related one. So in this discussion, I tried to connect the related at the same time I conveyed the current affair of the first 10 topics of national issues. So we'll be meeting in the next discussion with the next 10 topics of national issues and national issues is very significant in UPSC preparation. Keep an extra eye on national issues and we'll meet in the next discussion with the next 10 topics. Have a great time. Thank you all.